Good morning and welcome. Picture Radio News Hour. Joe and Jason on this Tuesday. Hope everyone is doing well. I, uh, I'm all excited because the Nuggets and the Suns game five tonight and Phoenix is going to win. They're going to win. They're going to win. And then the series is going to be over because the Nuggets can't beat us at our place. Uh, so anyway, I uh, hate to disappoint all you Denver fans, but, uh, that's what's gonna happen there. 800-951-0592. AllAmericanGold.com is the website. And Jason, you know, tomorrow's another, you know, it's kind of interesting these Wednesdays. Some important stuff, right? Tomorrow, uh, we get CPI tomorrow. Uh, is it going to be, I, this is, I think a very, I don't know that this number is going to make a whole lot of difference. I think it's going to be lower, but I don't know that it's going to be dramatically lower. Uh, if it is dramatically lower, uh, then, uh, again, gold's going to go a lot higher tomorrow if it's dramatically lower. I, I, I just think it's probably going to be, you know, close to that 5% number. I, I, I think that's going to be the way it is, Joe. Um if it's higher, though, can you imagine if it's higher? You know, uh, the, the Fed will have to start talking uh, about raising rates again. <laughs> can you imagine, right? Yeah, you know, so, it, it, we don't know. I, I'll, I'll say this. Uh, the one thing that, that is interesting is rents, which were sky high last year and the year before that, seemed like they were coming back in. And now, all of a sudden, they're going back out again. And, and I think that makes sense. You know, I've been talking to a lot of my realtor friends, and they're just like, there's nothing out there. There is no inventory out there. Uh, and a lot of these home buyers, you're kind of stuck in this horrible situation of, man, I know I'm overpaying for this house. I know it. it but it's either that or rent. And, and what's happened now is all of a sudden again, the rental market, it, 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 it's back. It, it Rents are going back up again. And that was, I think, one of the things that the Fed was really banking on over the next, say, six months was this rent number down. Because the way the Fed does uh, the shelter, let, let's, let's, let's everybody remind everybody, the Fed doesn't actually track home prices well they do but they don't use that for inflation they don't actually even track the actual rent prices either mm -mm, no no they call existing homeowners and ask them hey what would you rent your place for what would you, if you had to rent, if you had to rent where you're currently paying your mortgage, what would you pay? Because they know that most people would say, well, whatever my mortgage is, right? Right? I pay that, right? So they, they, they but it, it's almost a, it's really truly an idiotic way of doing it because with computers we can get the actual numbers. But, uh, Jason, I, I can at least here in Arizona, it is exactly, there's a lot of articles over the last couple of weeks talking about rents going back up. That's exactly what's happened here, is uh, for a little while they went down, and now guess what? Nope, every, everything's back up again, and a lot of it has to do with there's not enough homes to buy. Yeah, that, that's the main problem with uh, demand destruction in rent, is that they're not building tons of homes you know the home building market is and we've reported the numbers it's, it's slowing dramatically but that doesn't mean that the amount of people needing the homes is slow dramatically whether it costs a lot or not so so that that that's why i've been hesitant about a housing price crash or a housing market crash uh i think that a sideways housing market really is what i've been looking at the last year and a half two years i just think it's going to go sideways and with inflation sideways means your home's losing value just like the, the stock market's been going sideways it's lost value because if everything else is more expensive, Joe, your stock is not gaining value. Gold has done pretty nice the last couple of years, just slowly just going up and staying up. So it's doing its job. So inflation is just, we just haven't had this since the 70s. I was a kid, so I don't—I didn't experience it or I wasn't watching it. 
but it's a good barometer of what was happening either. I think that's why it was so dramatic, and it was difficult for a lot of people to get through that, that time period. Yeah, and, and I think we're setting up, uh, and I've said it, and I, Jason, I know you agree, uh, this is stagflation. This, this yes, really, yes. truly is that, which is, is staying stubbornly high with an economy that is heading into a recession. Uh, and this is, this is different than the seventies. This is different than the Great Depression. You know, the Great Depression, it was deflation. The seventies was stagflation because the seventies, the economy was growing. Well, the inflation was roaring, right? And, and that, 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 that's a, you know, a, a different type of inflation. That's that, you know, that, that hyperinflation, if you will, where, hey, the economy's growing and inflation's growing. This is a stagflationary thing where inflation is growing, but the economy is not growing. Uh, and this is probably of, of the three. Right of the of the three deflation, hyperinflation, stagflation. The hardest one is stagflation. That's the hardest one, right? De- deflation's easy, right? Print more money. That's why they took the gold out, right? Gang, let's let's just get the printing presses going. We're just gonna throw money at everything, right? Much harder now with stagflation because you actually got to stop the money, but the economy can't handle it in the money being stopped. And then, of course, you end up in what? Well, the double Great Depression. Patriot Radio News Hour. We'll be back after the break. Eight hundred nine five one zero five nine two. Patriot Radio News Hour. Joe and Jason here on this Tuesday, and you know we're, we're talking about what we're expecting here. Uh, we will get the inflation number uh, tomorrow, the CPI number tomorrow. Uh, the we'll get one more CPI number before the f- next Fed meeting. Uh, but again, we're expecting something around that 5%, nothing too dramatic in either direction. Uh, but uh, again, we'll wait until those numbers play out. But the most likely setup here, it looks like stagflation. And, and that is uh, a, a very, very difficult problem to overcome. And, and again, uh, the the... The issue we have, well, if you want to beat inflation, I don't care if it's hyperinflation, stagflation, you have to crash the economy. I I hate to say that, but that's what it takes. Now, the difference between Paul Volcker, remember, Paul Volcker, yes, he crushed, he crushed inflation. Well, he did, but he had the benefit of it being hyperinflation, which meant the economy was really strong. So, yep, he did go to, to the super high rates, but you got to remember back then, 8 to 10% was, wasn't a lot. That's only happened in the last 20 years, right? I mean, you know, my wife and I bought our first home in 2000. Our interest rate was like 7 and a quarter, and that was low. That was low. But back then, you know, 10% wasn't that big of a deal. So when people hear about, you know, oh, the, 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 a mortgage was 20%, they, they're like, oh, my, you know, people freak out. Now people freak out when the, the mortgage rate is over 7%, right? They, they freak out at 7 now. Uh, but it just, just so you know, j Paul doesn't have that luxury. Right? Because and again, first quarter GDP was what one percent. Right, he he doesn't have that luxury. And of course, the other big problem is the banks are screwed, and he really can't afford to raise rates much higher than what they currently are. Which, to Jason's point, 
means all of these prices that we'd like to see go down, Jason, they're probably not going down. Yeah, I don't, I don't think they're going to go down. And, and uh, I, like I said, that sometimes the Fed seems like they're just don't know what they're doing. They're, they're, they're having trouble chasing their own tail. But other times it seems like they're making very deliberate decisions. And uh, th- that's the part that worries me, that uh, maybe we haven't seen the end of the rate hikes. Because if they see dramatic inflation in the future, first of all, they won't lower the rates. They, you know, they may pause, but they're not going to lower them. And, and I just I don't know, I have this tickle, Joe, that at some point they're going to have to raise the rates further because they cannot allow inflation to go out of control. They, they can't. They just simply can't. So if the CPI goes down to 4.7 on Wednesday, that will kind of fit the whole pause situation. But what if we get towards, you know, October, November, December, and suddenly the CPI goes back up to 6? You know, then what does that mean? That means they have to raise the rates later this year possibly, right? I mean, it's, it's all about the inflation, Joe. You, you know, stagflation, inflation, just like you said, it all depends on inflation because they let inflation get out of control. There's no reason to have a Fed anymore. That's, that's something people need to understand. That's the one thing that the Fed is supposed to stop is massive hyperinflation. You know, or this is the country that's always going to pay its debts, right, Joe? Well, yep. maybe they're yep. not going to be able to pay their debt soon. Quick, quick look here at the markets. Uh, the Dow is down 25. The S&P is down 11. The Nasdaq's down 60. Gold's flat. Uh, silver, pretty flat as well. Uh, this market recap brought to you by our friends over at Y Refi. Listen, Y Refi doesn't care. Hey, inflation, deflation, hyperinflation, stagflation. Uh, Jay Powell, uh, the, the, the trust factor, you know that 50% of people are now worried about their money in the bank. And, and again, how is it only 50? And for those other 50%, God bless you. Seriously. God bless you for being able to stick your head so far up your backside that you're not worried about it. Seriously. I mean, uh, it's something I think about every single day. Right, that that how how precarious this is, it, and these bank runs have not stopped. Uh, even the biggest banks, dude, they're losing deposits by the hundreds of billions, and people are going into money markets. They're they're they're, they're moving money over to to Joey at Northwestern Mutual. They're calling our friends over at Y Refi because they're smart enough to know the house of cards is starting to get ready to go under, and you better not have the money sitting in those bank accounts. Check out our friends at at Y-Refi. You can get up to 10.25% return. It's fixed. It's compounded daily. You can do whatever you want with your monthly income. You can roll it back in. You can use it as income. You can turn it on. You can turn it off. There's no fees. If you if you had to end it, or let's just say you wanted the, the whole 10.25%, that means you're telling Y Refi, hey, I'm going to stay with you for five years. At five years, you get 10.25% return. One year, you get 6.25. And every year it goes up, you know, 7.25, 8.25. You, you get the idea. But if you have to end early for whatever reason, you get your entire principal back. Check them out. Invest, yrefi.com. That's the word invest, the letter Y, R-E-F-Y.com. Or call them at 888-Y-REFI-24. That's 888-Y-REFI-24. And Jason, I've been saying this about Jay Powell for a long time. He's a patsy. He's weak. He, he is... Uh, uh, oblivious, and I, I'm going to say oblivious because that's the only thing I can think. Because I don't think he's smart enough, and maybe I'm wrong. Maybe he is to take this down on himself. But it's kind of interesting that Bloomberg is saying that world confidence in Jerome Powell's leadership of the Fed has dropped precipitously, according to the latest survey, and is now at or below. The lowest amongst Fed governors in recent history, Fed presidents, you know. So, again, you know, think about probably Volcker and Greenspan were probably hugely respected. Bernanke and Yellen, not nearly as much. Jay Powell, and I say it all the time, most people don't even know who Arthur Burns is. 
but he was the guy that was running the Fed during the hyperinflation of the 70s. Uh, and the rest of the world, Jason, they're starting to agree with me. This guy isn't getting the job done. Yeah, well, it's a job he shouldn't have to begin with. I mean, I, I'm thinking about all those names of those Fed chiefs you're talking about. Did, did any of them actually make the decisions to do those things? I mean, how many of them should get the credit for the bad stuff or the good stuff? <laughs> right? I mean, Volcker, did, did Volcker make, maybe Volcker, did Volcker actually make those decisions, Joe? I, I don't know. But, uh, you know, I, I think of Ben Bernanke. To me, Ben Bernanke was horrible. I thought he was terrible. I just, you know, but he was just the guy that was there when the housing crash was underway right so i don't know it wasn't really his fault but uh, i don't know joe do, do any of them really make the decisions i, I you know they're, they're they're figureheads they're taking marching well orders. and again right we, we we'll take it at face value we don't know right we don't know but they're the ones that they they're given credit for these decisions true yeah. right right or wrong they're the ones that you know they get the praise or they get the blame uh and, and again to think about this guy's got lower ratings than ben bernanke which, by the way, Ben Bernanke, I think his his low his low was thirty nine percent. Remember, this was this that clown in August of oh seven. They had just raised the rates to five point two five percent, and was saying we're going to raise them again in the next meeting. And oh, don't worry. It's just a subprime problem. It's just a little frothy, and everything's wonderful. 39%. Janet Yellen, who at the time, I, I, I told everybody, this is the most dangerous woman in the world. Extremely, and I mean extremely liberal. Right? She wants control. She believes... The more control the central bank has, the better. And even her, even she, was a, uh, her low number was 37%. Jay Powell has eclipsed them. Uh, and now you're talking about uh, less than a third of, of, of the nation has any belief. And, and I'll just use the words they used because I don't want to, uh, I don't want to oversell it here. 36% of U.S. adults say they have a great deal or a fair amount of confidence in Jay Powell. Well, that leaves the other 64% to be like, yeah, I don't really have a whole lot. That's not a good thing, Jason, right? I don't, I don't, and put me in that 64. And, and whatever the most, I have no confidence. There, I have no confidence in this clown whatsoever. So as you're talking about these guys taking, you know, they get the credit for these decisions, whether they decided it or not. It, it makes me think that the uh, Fed chiefs are basically Lee Harvey Oswald. They get the credit for it, but we don't know for sure if they did it or not. <laughs> I think right. that's what they right. are. They're Lee Harvey Oswald, right? Yeah, and it, nobody likes them. I mean, if you know what's to, going on, you don't like you don't like Fed chiefs. To give you perspective on why why is this a big deal? Though? Why are you telling us this? Who cares? Well, you need to care. You know where Alan Greenspan was? Almost his low. Was like seventy seven percent, seventy eight percent had a great deal or a fair amount of confidence. We have no back. There's nothing backing the dollar. Nothing. It's a piece of paper with color on it. It's all about confidence. That's what it's all about. And you're sitting there saying that, hey, we're down to like. Only one, two out of every three people don't have confidence in this guy. How does he still have a job? Who do they replace him with? <laughs> Who, who's next up that's going to be so much better, Joe, right? Well, you know, I know, know who's next. I've, I've said it already. Brand I think Lael Branyard's next. And she's, I, 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 Janet Yellen scared the crap out of me. And I think uh, she's even, she's a notch. Uh, above Janet Yellen, as far as the liberalness of this, and again, that's what that's what this digital currency is all about. Make no mistake about it. This digital currency 
is about them having control. Because here's the problem right now. All of you are taking your money out of the bank. Everybody is taking their money out. Well, with a digital currency, right, it's easy for them to control that now. And, of course, that's going to be at the Fed. Hey, there's no reason for you to take your money. We're not a bank. We're the Fed. Right? Think about it. Your digital credits are safe and sound right here with us. And and don't worry if you if we had a run on right. We can just make money up out of thin air. Right, Jason? That's what they do time and again. I think they're running up against the wall with this one. I think... Personally, I think they're printing the money right now in the middle of the rate hike. I think they're doing everything they can to save these banks from going under immediately. They they want them to go under slowly and a little later. So, And we have no idea what they're doing, Joe. We don't really know what they're doing until, what, 10 years later, I guess. Well, Freedom of Information Act, we're allowed to know two years later. But <laughs> at any time, the central bank could go to the Supreme Court and get them to add more years to it. Remember, during the the last crisis, we didn't get to know for 12 years. I wonder if that's going to be the same. This probably Patriot Radio News Hour. We'll be back. Oh, by the way, we got a really cool special coming up next.